Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this planet. Uh, this is Mark Gray live from Normandy. Uh, I'm hosting today uh, on the uh, Project Camelot TV uh, network. Uh, I'm hosting uh, uh, a guest from uh, Hong Kong. Actually, he's, he's from the US, but he lives, he's been living in Hong Kong for quite some while. And uh, this is Robert Stanley. Hi, Robert, how are you? I'm doing well, Mark. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk a, uh, shortly about your, your very extensive bio. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, basically, you've been uh, traveling to, um, well, you have traveled to, uh, to about 60 countries in the world. Uh, and uh, you, you've, um, you've been really um, fascinated by um, ancient mysteries as well. Uh, and and you've, uh, you've been leading this, this uh uh, uh, this this radio show called the Unicus uh, Radio Hour, right? That's uh, stopped, yeah. I think, uh, a couple of years ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you also have this uh, UnicusMagazine.com uh, uh, extensive website, and you've uh, done some research with. Uh, you've actually helped out uh, Wes Penry on his books and papers, correct? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, just the the most recent book. The most recent book. I helped yeah. Them. yeah, yeah, about the transhumanist singularity, artificial intelligence, things like that. Right, right, right. So you're a native of Los Angeles, and uh, you grew yes. up in Malibu, uh, and which, which, uh, that's where your your first ET contacts actually started, right? In Malibu. Correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, you moved to New England afterwards, right? Uh, uh, eventually, yeah, 2008. Yeah. I was born in uh, 1959 in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And you're a former corporate journalist for Honda Research and Development in, in, in California. And yep. uh, you, you, you're employed uh, as a corporate editor uh, now for a, a, an international company in Hong Kong. Right. Um, you're the author of, of uh, uh, several books, Close Encounters on Capitol Hill and uh, Covert Encounters in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, you're the webmaster for Unicus Magazine, and you were also uh, the producer of the, the Unicus Radio Network. Um, and you've also served as a correspondent for America's Morning News and America's Radio News Network. Um, you, you, you know quite a few personalities in ufology, in a ufology field uh, uh, internationally. You've interviewed a few. Yes. People. Yes, I've interviewed a few. Um, friends with some of these people. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I read everybody's work. Uh, they don't always agree with each other, and they obviously right. don't always agree with me. But that's okay. Ufology, uh, the ufology field <laughs> and researchers are is a very divided uh, field. Uh, I, yeah. I I know so uh, for being in France, it's it's actually the worst, uh, the, the the most divided community out there in, in France. So, <laughs> oh, sorry yeah. to hear that. <laughs> and well, we have the very nuts and bolts types, you know, which is ninety percent of them. We have the very yeah. new age type, which is like maybe, you know, 9% and there's 1% that's truly researching, honestly. And, uh, and most of this community is infiltrated by, by Intel, French Intel. So basically. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, but, you know, I got to say that Jacques Vallée, the work that he did, mm -hmm. uh, although he's, he's spent a lot of time in America. I mean, and as far as French researchers go, I think he's probably the best. And I don't think he went quite far enough. He was close, but I don't think he really went far enough in order to get to the bottom of what's really going on, in my opinion. He's, he's written a f uh, quite a few good books uh, yep. in his days. And uh, the problem with Jacques Vallée and, and most of the uh, honest researchers today know that he's, he's totally affiliated with and, and, and dedicated to NASA. Uh, NASA and, mm -hmm. and he's been he's been pretty much uh, infiltrated by Intel himself uh, one year he's allowed to talk speak up and and the next year he can't <laughs> he can't tell so many things and the year after it's he's allowed to say some things and so um, today uh, I have to admit um, not many trust him in the French community um, today sure he's, he's, he's the NASA guy you know he's the NASA French guy well look I understand Mark but everybody's been compromised to some extent mm -hmm. if what I'm saying is accurate about these mental parasites it yep. doesn't even have to be um, you know intelligence agencies or secret societies anybody can be influenced covertly by these uh, archon parasite exactly and that's what we're going to talk about today we're, we're going to talk about the, uh, the the archonic influence on mankind. We're going to talk about Anki's uh, true role, 
who was Enki, who is he, because he's still around, and the mind par parasite that you mentioned on mankind. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the end, we're all trying to find some solutions, and you're going to give us a few keys uh, about the antidote. Um, the, 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 it's actually factual uh, that the mind parasite has been... Uh, has been existing for how many years since Enki created us, uh, right? The Anunnaki's. My understanding of all this, Mark, is that he was infected or act inadvertently, he and his crew created those mental parasites, thought forms, uh, long before that he showed up here on this planet. So he brought the infection with him when he took over this world as part of his illegitimate empire. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to start with your your personal sources of information and and your personal experiences uh, briefly um, okay. to describe you know who you're getting all your information from and I know you've interviewed quite a few people you've written some books <laughs> you've had some personal yeah. experiences and encounters uh, can you right. just sum summarize what what your sources are? Um, sure, I mean I don't rely on one source, mm -hmm. but you'd already mentioned Wes Penray. I didn't come across him until late 2014, and it was very helpful. But I also knew that. Wes was missing some pieces of the puzzle that I had. Mm -hmm. So I shared that with him. Um, I got to say, though, we really can't prove most most of this, what we're saying here. What, right. I mean, I'm talking to everybody, not just you and I. But what we're talking about here is speculation. Okay. Yes, I've analyzed it. I feel that this is accurate. But... If we find new information tomorrow, then we have to readjust our understanding of this or reanalyze what we think we know. Uh, and part of the problem here is that it's being intentionally withheld from us. You know, I mean, as much UFO activity and extraterrestrial contact that has gone on here, even in modern times, there hasn't been any direct communication that can be authenticated. And even if they did land and hold a pe press conference, or offer us documentation or artifacts of some kind, we would still have to do a very, very thorough job of vetting that information and or artifacts. Because honestly, I don't think we can trust these individuals at this point. Um, they are treating us like um, slaves. Right. Yeah. And all right, they don't want us to know the truth because believe me, we're not stupid. We could handle the truth, but I don't. I think it would be inconvenient for them to tell us the truth. It wouldn't. It wouldn't help serve their agenda. Right, right. And although we, 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 we can see a, a lot of pictures uh, of UFOs over Capitol Hill in, in your book. Right. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and we're still waiting for them to land on, 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 on the lawn of, 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 uh, of the White House, you know. <laughs> so. Sure. Well, they didn't land on the, yes, but they landed right down the street and were photographed doing so July 16, 2002. That's the only reason I first, I first wrote about that uh, okay. back in um, 2005. The event happened in 2002, July 16. In, in any case, my personal experience with this really uh, went into overdrive on uh, September 21st, 1985, mm -hmm. when I actually saw the Archon parasite. And then l later that evening, morning, I was confronted by Enki, also known as Lucifer. He's known by many different names, but I didn't know. At the time, all he said was that he was the father, which I didn't know what that meant. I mean, it took me almost 29 years before I I understood that, that I'd been interfacing with Enki at least twice that I was aware of. However, I did – I felt that I was in touch with him. I really thought – I was hoping that he was coming to my um, aid. I, I felt that I was being attacked by the Archon Parasite. And um, uh, <laughs> when he showed up, when I was having an out-of-body experience that night, when he showed up, he looked like Christ, and he said he was the Father. I thought that he really was there as an answer to my plea for help. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was crying for help on a mountaintop in Malibu. And um, uh, I didn't know better. Um, most people don't when they encounter him or others that serve him. It's very seductive. They're very manipulative and um, um, very deceptive. Uh, in fact, I think Jacques Vallée wrote about this, Messengers of Deception uh, was one of his titles, and they are extremely deceptive. So 
the thing that the reason that I kept looking for more answers is because I felt that I didn't understand what was going on, that I wasn't getting a straight answer. Mm -hmm. And every time I felt that I was getting more information, it just, it, it raised even more questions in my mind as to what's going on. Why are these things following me around? How can they possibly be reading my mind? Or more importantly, who are they? What gives them the right to do that to me, let alone the rest of humanity, obviously via abductions. Um, one of the things that I've learned, I found is very disturbing is that um, the people that claim to be abducted by aliens are only a small fraction of the number of people that go missing on this planet every year. Right. David without Politis. a trace. Yeah. David Polite has yes. talked about that. Right. He's, he's not the first one, but he's the most thorough researcher in that regard. It's very disturbing to me because even before Mr. Pilates had published his findings, I had already been told that this was going on, that there were people being kidnapped and taken mm -hmm. off the world, this world, and never returned. Of course, we don't know what happened to them, but I presume it's not a good thing. Right. Um, it almost happened to my wife and I. And... Mm -hmm. I mean, we were allegedly invited. This is shortly after I met her, and she was, she had just started publishing Unicus magazine after returning from her close encounters mm -hmm. in Peru. And um, we were introduced to a gentleman who said he was from a race of beings that had been here for some time and that they were more advanced than us, but that we were all related. And essentially what we were told is that uh, Los Angeles was going to be nuked hmm. and that we were very important in a bigger scheme, my wife and I, is what they claimed they could see to the future or knew certain events that would happen, right? Right. So they offered to they offered to take us off this world to another world and that we would be treated like royalty. So they were baiting us, basically. And um, I was very much against it. Mm -hmm. But then I later, my wife seemed to be, well, at the time we were just, we were just dating. But she's my wife now for the last 20 something years. Anyway, um, she wanted to go and I thought, well, okay. Um, I, I was, I'm still, I've been in love with her since the day we met. Okay. It was really love at first sight. And I do feel like we are very much soulmates, but um, for some reason I decided against my better judgment that it, that I would go with her. Um, I think par partially because I believed if, well, if we can go, we should be able to come back, right? Right, 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 right. I, they didn't say we couldn't come back, so I was assuming if we went off world, at some point we could come back, and boy, wouldn't that make a story, or at least help put things into better perspective. At, at so, this very moment of your story, it reminds me of Eve Lorgan's book, you know, uh, The Dark yep. Side of Cupid. <laughs> yep, yep, there is that, yeah. Yes, they tend to arrange certain things. Hmm as part of their agenda, because as I've said many times publicly, this to me anyway, feels like a nine dimensional chess game. And most of us are completely unaware that we're pawns of the Archon or that the other levels exist, because even though we are multi multi-dimensional beings, uh, we've been led to not understand or believe that to be true because, look, I'll give you an example. In tribal cultures, it was perfectly acceptable and normal for an, an initiate or basically a child at a certain age, they would be um, initiated through rituals, usually involving drumming or, and or some, side of, some sort of drug that would allow them to have an out-of-body experience so that they would know from experience, not theoretically, but they would know from experience that they were not just flesh and bone. Right. That they were actually a spirit, a soul. So, uh, and uh, we have mm, a prohibition on that now. And anybody who does have those kind of experiences is considered to be having a hallucination. Right. And okay, because and that's the the newly formed um, mental health profession. To me, as far as I know, is Luciferian. It's, they're so concerned about controlling our consciousness because they understand that that's the key to everything. 
Right. And, the psychotropic um, uh, uh, drugs uh, given by the medical industry is the uh, pharmaceutical industry is, is definitely not no better than the ayahuasca. You know? um, well, no, actually, it's worse it's in worse. a lot of ways because uh, it's designed not to empower, right. but to disenfranchise. And more importantly, because because of something that most people would understand as the placebo effect. Mm -hmm. When an authority figure, such as a doctor, or that would be a psychiatrist in this case, uh, gives someone a pill and says, this will help you do whatever. Mm -hmm. If you trust the authority figure, it's going to happen exactly as they say. Right. With, with side effects. <laughs> with, well, of course. Of course, because it's toxic. Most all of that stuff is toxic to our system. In any, in any case, so um, I'm, don't let me ramble, Mark. I, I, I'll tend to just go on a rant. So just keep asking me questions so we can stay on, on, on yeah. track here. Let's go back to the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Archon name. Um, yeah. So you mentioned on your site, uh, website that Colin Wilson used the term in uh -huh. Archon in, in his 1967 novel that described holographic tumorous thought forms as a cancer of consciousness. <laughs> Actually, actually, I don't think so. I think he okay. called it he called it cancer of the consciousness, but he didn't use the term archon. Oh, he didn't. Okay. okay. No, no, he did not. But I, I'm very curious where he came up with this concept because mm -hmm. it seemed to fit so well. I mean, look, I know that as a creative person that a lot of times that other layer of consciousness that we just think is just coming out of nowhere mm -hmm. is in fact a connection to all of creation. That's where the creativity is constantly flowing into us. Yes, we can, we can feed back into it. But the bottom line is, I do think that we are, uh, what I was shown anyway back when I was having a lot of contact up in the uh, the mountains of Malibu back in the 80s and 90s, was that we're all connected through a web of light, mm -hmm. and that um, uh, unfortunately most of us are not don't have a very strong connection. It's been dumbed down, so. Um, but I, some of us obviously have a better connection, and that's where so-called artists or creative thinkers so, tap into this information. And then they usually present it as fiction because they know nobody's going to believe it. But obviously, right. it's it has some basis in reality. Right, right, right. And 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 spin. It's been well. What's the difference between the uh, well, in the hierarchy between the Overlord, the Archon, and 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 their, I would say their crew on Earth. You know, that's yeah. applying. Yeah, uh, the rules and, and orders. <laughs> well, that's a good question, and it's it's worth defining that for people uh, who don't understand it. I mean, it took me a long time to to have any kind of clarity on this on this issue, uh, because again, they're very deceptive. They don't want us to know who they are and what they what they're doing here, but um, and what they need from us. So, at the very top would be Lucifer and his original crew, who accidentally created these mental parasites when they went insane it was it was completely accidental I, it could have been avoided but from again for, i think i shared that with you uh, earlier mm -hmm. off air mm -hmm. was that they they were traumatized they suffered uh, uh what we call multiple personality disorder mm -hmm. a disassociation of their soul basically it fragmented and so they lost internal integrity um they um and they also created the mental parasites inadvertently. So they were infected and are infected by that. But so so at the top is these Luciferian entities or the Ankyites, and they created the mental parasite. Together, those two is what the Gnostics were calling the Archon or the Lords, the overlords of humanity. Below that, though, you have the the servants, the the more uh, the, the, like well, let's just call them Illuminati. Mm -hmm. All right. This, this, some people now are calling it a deep state, shadow government, whatever. It's the same thing. They're so yeah. most of those people are aware of the fact that they are serving the archons. The archon agenda is something that they're aware of, and they're obviously benefiting from serving that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The rest of us below that would be the foundation of the pyramid are just pawns of the archon. Right. We're, we're, we're like soul food, uh, basically, uh, energy. Yeah, yeah, and that was the other thing that was really surprising to me. It took a while to understand that um, the the mental parasites are feeding off of negative energy that's released when we hurt ourselves or others. 
It comes through our DNA. Our, I mean, our DNA is constantly really, it's emitting mm -hmm. light. And it, most of the time it's a very positive light or a different frequency that they can't feed off of. So that's why they constantly are, are tormenting us and uh, provoking. And, and it's also why they, they um, work very hard to keep us divided because they don't want us to unite and they certainly don't want us to unite against them. That's, a, that's why they remain covert as much as possible. However, that's changing and that's why they're acting so desperate. Right, right, and right. Recently, recently, okay? Yeah, it looks like they're, they're acting desperate, but um, uh, that like they, or that they want to take it to the next uh, step over, you know, as far as uh, speeding okay, up the process. Okay, explain to me, what is, the, what is the next step? What do you think the next step is? Uh, to me, the reset basically the, the blackout um, the blackout process where, where, when they can actually harvest souls and maybe start over again because because they're getting desperate as you said or this is a cycle maybe maybe it's a cycle um, the, the, yeah. uh, the reason I asked you that's a leading question mark so yeah. from my perspective based on my years decades of research into this problem mm -hmm. we are the new Atlantis Enki knew that his empire here, Let's just call it Atlantis. It wasn't an island. It was a global em empire that was his doing, serving his agenda, not just on this world, but beyond. At that time, he was creating what we think of as monsters, but he also had a high level of technology that he'd put here. The mm -hmm. reason being that he was creating a contingent of super soldiers, at least that's what we call them now, right? Mm -hmm. That would um, That he could use in the civil war that he started a long time ago, before he showed up here, he started a civil war with his family in the Orion Empire. Okay. So, okay, so, and that's how, when he came here, he captured this world. And, and so it went from being very peaceful, benevolent, symbiotic world, paradise, that some people might call Lemuria or Mu. And when he showed up, he, he wrecked that. He wrecked the entire solar system, changed it around to serve his agenda, and he changed all the life here. Genetically modified everybody and everything is pretty much to be, well, the opposite of what it was and to what it is. Now, at some point, it became a legitimate threat to his family, and that's why they told him, we are going to wipe. If you don't clean up your mess, we are going to do it for you. And he promised his family that he would stand down and that he wouldn't interfere with their plans to wipe out Atlantis globally. And, but, of course, he, say he preserved a portion of his creation here and reseeded it after the um, – this. he reseeded this world after the Great Flood. And that's why Sir Francis Bacon – um, wrote the book, The New Atlantis, because it was a blueprint. He knew this was coming. Mm -hmm. He'd obviously been told by someone within the Luciferian Empire that this was the goal. This was the agenda. The long-term goal was to reconstitute Atlantis, to create an, a new contingent of super soldiers in the so-called secret space program, which is not really that secret, mm -hmm. so that he could use those special forces to attack his family in Orion. Now, here's the problem with that. It makes us a legitimate target in the Civil War, once again. Okay, right, Just, right, right. So, so what you're saying about the next level is, is something I agree with, but I'm just trying to help better define what that is and why it's so damn important for people to understand that artificial intelligence is not new. It's something that Enki Lucifer created a long time ago before he even got here and, and created his empire. He actually had to do that because he knows that they will not question his authority. Unlike a lot of the people that work or beings that work with him, they have no integrity because they're psychopathic, just like him. So he knows he can't trust him, so that therefore he created artificial intelligence to serve him without question. And uh, now we're seeing it emerge again as though it's something new, something great. It will serve us. It's not true at all. None of that is true. Right, right. We, we can see with the, with the Pokemon Go um, experiments, you know, on smartphones and yeah. iPhones. This is like a CIA-based yeah. uh, uh, sponsored uh, mind control test or 
maybe energy har harvesting through through those games and you see all of this virtual reality uh, uh, but but we do that in a in a holographic construct um, as you mentioned a few times um, so right. uh, and time not not being truly linear uh, this is all an illusion but we have you yeah. know our, our landmarks and reference points in history historical uh, ref reference land landmarks um, to help us actually to control us to, to get through time and 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 this this actually uh, uh, space construct uh, uh, to obey and follow uh, follow influences or uh, or social engineering or, or ritual abuse control and and, and this whole program uh, what if everything everything that you're you're mentioning was happening all in at the present time you know not in the past but everything it goes on right now uh, well that's why that I mentioned that the original Atlantis has been reborn right okay it isn't any different right. as far as I can tell and it has it's serving the same purpose which is not about enlightenment of us it's, it's about not. serving Enki's agenda which is for people who don't know what I'm talking about he was born a prince mm -hmm. in the house of Orion the royal court of Orion in the what? belt stars of Orion was okay. he part of the Anunnaki species? Or that's that that's a very misleading term. Right. Their, Sitchin was very yeah, well paid for basically right messing. Yeah. With, yeah, he messed with a lot of people's minds. Uh, Nibiru is not where they come from. It's not where Enki comes from. Uh, this all this problem started in the belt stars of Orion, which is the 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 court of a very large empire. A very large galactic empire now he was born a prince he was the first son born of a virgin birth allegedly to the queen his mother at some point he ventured off into space he was still a divine being in the sense that he was healthy he was a builder or creator of worlds but but at he he ventured into a place that has only been described to me as a forbidden zone I, it was forbidden because it was dangerous. He, as a god, a demigod, did not think that he would be harmed by it. So he, he and his crew ventured in there, and they went mad. They literally became insane. And as I said, they, they became self-infected through inadvertently creating those mental thought forms, the parasitic thought forms. When they found their way out, they had turned into destroyers of worlds. And so when he made his way back home... His parents said, "Well, uh, hey, we're glad you're home, but uh, you're, you're you're not well, and you're certainly not well enough to become king of the empire." So, uh, to summarize, he said, "Screw you! I'll start my own empire then," and which he did, and that's where the civil war began. That's where the war in heaven started. Right. Okay, so I want people to be clear. Well, when I'm, when I say the word Lucifer, I know it, it triggers a lot of people that are religious. They, they color everything I'm saying in religious terms. I don't see it that way. I think it is, it's a secular problem. And more, if you want to say it's a spiritual problem, I would have to agree on some level. We're talking about consciousness or the soul. That is the root of the problem. But it's not the same. It's it, the narrative that has been given to us. And I'll go back to Sir Francis Bacon. He's the one who edited the King James Bible. He right. was not a Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of the, in fact, I'll just be blunt. I will say that all of the religions on this world in modern times um, were created by Lucifer to, ser to serve Lucifer. And I know that doesn't sit well with people. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't believe in God. I just have a different understanding of what God and creation is. More importantly, I understand how royal families work and that these empires typically are at odds with one another at oh. least on the, this planet but this planet is not a good um example of what creation is all about this is a deviation here this is a real anomaly it's uh a distortion of the original creation so we're okay a so experiment basically no it's not an experiment mark that's i hear people say that a lot Right. Originally, it, the experiment, the only thing that was, if you, I agree with about that is that uh, allegedly the queen and her second son, the half-brother of Enki, 
-hmm. when they they when they created this world they wanted to see what would happen if they took all the different life forms from within the orion empire and put them on one planet that's it and it's mm -hmm. and it seemed to be working quite well until enki went wow. mad and and took over by force the idea was that if things could manage to cohabitate symbiotically here that they would use that as a blueprint throughout the rest of the orion empire okay so and which makes sense you know um it makes sense to me they would in that way they could increase the diversity across the entire empire so that's the only experiment that went on and the other thing that I find very disturbing is when people talk about ascension. Right. Um, I don't agree with that concept at all. I mean, we were very well enlightened, very peaceful, loving, empathic, telepathic uh, uh, beings in a very beautiful um, paradise planet prior to Enki showing up and, and wrecking it, turning it into a prison. Right, 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 right. Um, is, is, is the Orion Empire living in this dimension or, or a different dimension? Yeah, good question. Uh, I wouldn't call it a, no, it's, it's an entirely other universe that Enki's universe is nested in. He, when he created his universe, he did it artificially or synthetically. And the reason he did it that way is because his consciousness has been uh damaged and so here i have to give a little more information um, most people that study physics whether it's quantum physics or whatever you want to think of as modern science is missing a huge part of the equation only recently were we given something a model called digital physics which states that that consciousness is primary okay so what is consciousness it's a waveform mm -hmm. It, everything we know is a wave form or a pattern of waves. So consciousness is a wave form. If you slow it down a bit, that was what something we would call energy. If you slow it down a bit more, that's we would recognize that as matter, especially as the patterns form and they interact with one another. And they solidify or become more stable. The patterns, once they're stable, this, this is called cymatics. Right. Spelled with a C, C Y. Okay, mm -hmm. cymatics. Anyway, the those patterns are originating in consciousness. But what generates the waveforms? That would be our souls. So, um, and I don't honestly don't know what generates a soul, but that's kind of besides the point. We are. That's what we are. Right. We are some sort of some intelligent living energy form that that has some sort of uh, coherence, integrity, right? I mean, some people say it looks like an an egg shape that radiates light, but that's just one that's just one way of looking at it or talking about it. So, so if you can imagine a god, a creator, mm -hmm. uses the consciousness because if you really think about it, nothing gets created without being conceived in the mind first. Right. It right. starts with a choice. And the thought comes, and then the longer and the stronger you hold that thought, let's see, just say I just want to make a car, all right, for example. Mm -hmm. I have a rough idea what a car is, but I could make any kind of car, it, right, based on my whatever, my creativity, however it takes me. But it's still, I, I visualize, I conceive it in my consciousness, not in my brain, it's in my whatever, that other realm. And, and eventually it will become manifest through energy and matter, but it starts with consciousness. So if a person, even though Enki was incredibly intelligent and divine, once his consciousness was broken and fractured like that, it's almost impossible for him to create simply using that process I just described. So what he's left with is to manipulate matter and energy that's already been created by others. Right, right, right. Okay, that's yeah. the difference. So when he created his empire, it's a very small part of the what the universe that we 
okay, the universe that we're in right now is synthetic. That's Enki's universe, and it's, it's, it's it only makes up like what five six percent of the known universe that we see. Most of that we say is scientists tell us is dark. Right. That's so, not true. That's we can't see it though. We cannot see that because we have been blinded. We have been manipulated so that we cannot see. We know it's there. We are just unable to see it. Right, 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 right. right. They, well, it's it's a holographic projection or something. It's uh, it's. Um, you mentioned once uh, about the the programming of the ma the matrix through the artificial moon and uh, also yeah. Saturn. Can you right. can you explain a little bit how how that works? Um, sure, it's it, it's what they call parallel processing. It's where, okay, and we're also now calling this quantum computing. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is it's not just one computer. There's multiple computers that are working on multiple dimensions mm -hmm. at the same time. So this is how, again, it's sort of like the, the Russian dolls. You know, you got one inside the other, inside the other. Um, each layer is, an, is another level of, of com computer processing power or artificial intelligence so they're nested one inside the other uh, it's sort of like walls around something and he built it that way so that it was uh, very difficult to get in and even more difficult to get out right okay because he he knew what he was doing was illegitimate and again it sort of reflects his personality or what's what he's become and this multiple personality uh, entity and so um, but it's, like I said, it's v relatively speaking, it's very small. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, very uh, finite and yeah. limited in its abilities. Um, so outside of that is the, is the real universe. And beyond that is the rest of creation. Because I don't think there's only one universe. I really feel like there's an infinite number of universes that are in the process of being created, that have been created and are being created beyond what we consider space and time. Because that is an illusion. That's part of Enki's illusion. But when you mentioned the moon, being that was brought here relatively recently as part of the control system. That whatever they did to Saturn, that was another issue because um, the rings didn't used to be there. And um, they're obviously broadcasting something from there. In fact, the rings are actually energy waves that are being we can actually see that again it's through cymatics you see the energy waves being broadcast out of saturn through the rings it's not that he doesn't need the rings just saying that you can see the energy being the waves coming off of saturn are being reflected in the patterns of the rings themselves that's that's all i'm trying to say right. but those are it doesn't it that's not the end of it that's just where it's i mean yes that's where it it ends here but that's not the beginning of it the, be, the nexus for all of that is the artificial intelligence that he originally created to administrate his his universe, which, again, I think that is run by artificial intelligence, and it has a very finite uh, ability, and and I I know it's unsustainable. Right. It just it, it just is. So at some point, it is going to collapse on itself. Uh, yeah, uh, Norman Bergeron uh, also took pictures, uh, shots of of, uh, of, of uh, huge, huge uh, ships yeah. and crafts in the, in the rings of Saturn. Uh, yeah, rebuilding them for some reason, which I don't, I'm not clear on that. But I mean, we could speculate about all these things. Mm. I'm sure this is why disclosure doesn't happen, though, Mark, is because they they can't just tell us. It's like being a little pregnant. There's no such thing. They can't just tell us. Oh, there's you know extraterrestrials. Okay, really, where are they from? What do they want? Are they friendly? Are they not? I mean, it's just like a series of questions. It's like dominoes, right? So it, it, they're trying to manage the information as best they can. Or better yet, they have been doing psychological warfare against humanity to prevent us from asking too many questions. They've been doing that for some time now, in modern time, I should say. Uh, and yet the activity, we know the activity is ongoing. And it, it didn't start in 1947, okay? Let's just be clear about that. Right, right, it, it right. It has nothing to do with Roswell or the, Ar the Kenneth Arnold side. It, obviously, it goes back to biblical times and beyond. We just – we don't have the, the access to uh, what I consider to be valid information because uh, 
what I understand is all there used to be libraries all over the planet that had this kind of information and those were all systematically intentionally destroyed and or hidden so that we couldn't know who we really are, where we are, and what's being done to us here. Right, and and uh, yeah, the thing is, uh, you talked about soul. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I forgot who who was talking about who talked about the uh, the soul generator factor. Uh, was it Kai Griffith or um, in in he uh, War in Heaven or something? Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, but can we can we imagine there's like some type of soul generator uh, issued from the source uh, somewhere and. Uh, it, it you know it it creates souls and, and maybe feeds off yeah of it. yeah yeah uh, I understand what you're asking yeah. yes I mean the way I've seen it in my mind's eye is that we are all seeds of light each one of our souls is a seed that came from a parent you can imagine a garden of light where everything's interconnected through a web of light so, mm -hmm. so the parent tree at some point becomes mature enough that it bears fruit or seeds. Right, and each one of those seeds contains all the potential of the parent. This is an organic process, and it, and it, it, it in that regard, it is a fractal because it's self-perpetuating. It just keeps going on and on and on. Hmm. If the if the conditions are right, right, I feel that as seeds of light, any one of us could at some point um, become mature enough that we would birth our own universe. Okay, we would be the creator of that universe, which means that we would be completely responsible for all life in the universe. However, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't honor the free will of all the life we had just created, right? right? It's just like a child. You can't control everything that child does. You have to honor their free will in order for it to, comp comp you know, to continue its growth. So that's why free will is, in my opinion, that is the prime directive. They never talked about that in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that that's the reason that what's going on here is a huge violation, obviously, of our free will. And it's one of the reasons why they, I feel, that they, um, they work so hard to do mind control because mm -hmm. they want us to agree to things that are actually harmful to us that you know, go counter to our own uh, progress mm -hmm. as yes. seeds of light, as, as sovereign souls. They want us, they know that they need our permission, basically. Okay, so they trick us into doing things just like metaphorically when uh, Lucifer tricked Eve. Right, right. Well, the, that's the same thing with wars, uh, war pretexts, yeah. or you know, like false yeah. flags events uh, that yep. are going on all over and every so often. And we we have ours in France. We have quite a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> in the U.S., you, you're uh, you have quite a lot of them too. And uh, it seems like like every time it works you know like people don't don't ask questions it comes from the authority figure uh, so it right. must be true uh, <laughs> well that's that's the, what we, we call that the stockholm or milgram syndrome when we identify with our captors or authorities mm -hmm. in order to survive but that's wow. been conditioned into us it didn't that didn't that's a relatively new term for something that started as i say with lucifer and I know from religious people are going to say, oh, yeah, the uh, the apple or whatever. It's a little more complicated than that. Hmm. It's not impossible to understand. And again, I'm I'm using modern terminology for something very ancient. Right. And it, the problem is we can't validate this. We can only discuss it as speculation. Potentially, this is, is accurate. You know, but we, we throw words around like truth. This is the truth, whatever. We don't know. Nobody knows. Anybody who says they know for sure is lying hmm. or delusional because we just don't have access to that. We can't interview Enki or any of his people. I do, and I do get emails from people who claim they're part of Enki, this or, or whatever. And <laughs> yeah, fine, but it, it, it doesn't impress me because how do you how do you expect me to validate any of these statements? Uh, if if you, if you run across the, the real Anki, you know, well, well, the true Anki uh, step step forward, uh, you know, I'd like to interview him <laughs> as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't see that happening. No. But um, no, I. But you know what? I do think that he is going to return. Um, that was part of what I was showing us how this was going to go. At at some point, I mean, he's allegedly he's he left one of his sons in charge here. He's known as Marduk 
Ra Satan. Uh, that's one of his biological children that he he created here a long time ago, uh, who's very ruthless. He's just like his dad. So he's been in charge here. But now, as I told you, if this is accurate and that we are the new Atlantis and that it's we're this special forces that he had, that had, he's been um, cultivating here to attack his family. At some point, he probably will return under false pretenses as though it, it, okay because that's what i what i saw was that the the vatican and the un would take the lead in this in welcoming the return of the gods right and that they would of course be coming at a time of crises and they were going to help us solve our problems etc but in fact it was all more subterfuge or what is better known as sophistry it's very so, calculated yeah it's, and, and it, 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 it goes back to the root word of uh, sophia Right, right. The, de the, the demiurge. Yes. What the Gnostics, you see now, this is another problem. All the records that I feel that were valid or are valid have been kept from us. A lot of the records that we look to now, like, say, for example, the Nagamati Library, right. that's not much of a library. It isn't. There were tens of thousands of scrolls in the Library of Alexandria written by the Gnostics that could have given us a lot more information. And that was just one of many libraries all over the planet. So if we'd had access to all that and we could, you know, compare one set of records to the next, or better yet, be able to actually have a dialogue with these entities mm -hmm. and and try and validate some of this information, we wouldn't be in the situation we're at right now. But I do think that a lot of what we're uh, referencing as so-called like the Daniel tablets. Uh, Nagamati Library, all that stuff. I really question, even the, uh, as I told you before privately, the so-called Sumerian uh, cuneiform. Right. We don't know. We don't know who made that stuff. I mean, we're just taking the word of experts, alleged experts. Alleged. And Sitchin was Sitchin was not an expert. Okay. Right. Yeah, Unfortunately. Let's talk about Sitchin. Let's talk about Sitchin. <laughs> okay. Which, yeah. Which, sure. which, which will lead us to the Vatican, to uh, yeah. the, Roth, the Rothschilds in 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 this economics school in in London. Um, yeah. You know, he went to school with with the Rothschild, um, uh, and also uh, the, the the event that the religious are are waiting for, and this famous telescope in uh, Mount, Mount Graham. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, about a, yeah, about Lucifer. Lucifer, the telescope Lucifer, yeah, yeah. coincidentally, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, um, okay, so where do you want to start with this, Mark? Um, let's go back to Sitchin's real purpose and real allegiance, um, and true allegiance, that was he sincere, uh, or was he just, you know, mind control, or was he a manipulative, uh, uh and, and was he getting, uh, favors, I guess, from, from, from Luciferian agenda? Yeah, um, I think he was well paid. Mm -hmm. I do think if you, you know, you, you looked at the video I sent you where his two friends are talking about him yeah. and allegedly having a, an Anunnaki just materialize in his room and tell him he needed to go to the hospital, okay, because he was going to have a heart attack or something, which he went to the hospital and got heart surgery. Eventually, he died anyway. So how, how long had that kind of relationship been going on? It's impossible to say, but um, as you mentioned before, Zachariah Sitchin went to the London School of Economics. He was not a history major. He's not a linguist. Uh, I find it very curious that he would be going to a school for economics and then writing books about uh, his um, interpretation of the, the the tablets of Samaria about these uh, gods. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, this is important. It always freaks people out when I say this, but George Soros was one of his classmates. And you can see the handiwork of George Soros in social engineering. Now, both of these men, uh, anybody actually, I think that, that went or goes to the London School of Economics is potentially a pawn for the Rothschild dynasty. Mm -hmm. And they, in my opinion, the Rothschilds themselves are in a position of power simply because they serve the Luciferian agenda. So in a long, it's a long way of saying that Sitchin, whether he admitted it or knew it or not, was a Luciferian. He clearly, I've read all his books. I met him one time. We talked on the phone a couple times. Um, and um, obviously he's pro Enki. Right. 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 Enki is the victim, according to Sitchin. Um, Enki is our father. He is our savior. 
And this is again. This is, it took me a long time to figure this out. That when when I, he when I met him, he wasn't just trying to help me. He was confronting me. He felt I was a minor threat, and that it uncontained that it might actually cause a problem. So this is why he was confronting me and confounding me, which he was very good at. He's and I don't take it personally because that's what just what he does. Um, um, I should also add that I am not afraid of Enki and I don't hate him. I just understand him better than most people and this is why I'm speaking out. Um, I also know that when people get upset with what I'm telling them here, that it, I don't take that personally. I realize that you're, you know, people have a preset uh, perspective on this and it's very upsetting if somebody says something contrary to that. Okay, so attacking me is not going to change things. I'm either right or I'm not. And you don't need to defend Enki by sending me nasty emails. That isn't going to change anything, okay? Um, the information that I feel is, is accurate is already out there. You know, you can't pull it down. It's out there. And a lot of people, um, which you wouldn't know this unless you read my emails, which I'm sure somebody is besides myself, uh, a lot of people um, agree with what I'm saying, that doesn't make it right, but mo far more people uh, feel um, they resonate with what the the scenario that I am reporting seems to make more sense to them than a lot of this other convoluted nonsense, so-called. I, I think we just just say it's propaganda, or now we're calling it fake news. But right. this is not new. This is what happens during wartime. This planet has been a uh, a battleground for a, at least a couple hundred thousand years, as far as I can tell. And that's why it's really hard. You know, there's an old saying here on Earth is that um, the first casualty of war is truth. Right. And right. and right. So so this is, again, why, you know, libraries have been destroyed. People that try and get to the truth are killed, you know, or threatened. It's a, it's a real problem. And, and today's record and archives are all um, um, digital. So it's going to be uh, even easier to destroy. Uh, yeah, or manipulate, yeah, manipulate it, uh, clearly. Right. Um, so, yeah, so now we know the truth about Sitchin. So what about the Vatican? Because they're, with that telescope, they, uh, uh, they're trying to spot out the, uh, uh, the return of planet X or, or a, a cosmic uh, object that will come into our solar system. Yeah. It, okay. It's not Planet X. My understanding is it's um, a hollowed out asteroid, planetoid, whatever. A Death Star, basically, is what in Star Wars terminology, much like the, our moon being hollow, right. artificial, or I should say, yeah, yeah, it's it's a construct. At some point, they, took, they probably took a real natural orbiting body and turned it into a weapon system or a base. A portable base is what it is. So this is what they're looking for, is the return of Enki's uh, battleship. And right. it, it'll come in and they're going to say, oh, wow, you know, uh, the gods have, have returned. Right. I, I'm sure that's what the Vatican is doing. And that's, this is why they were working with Sitchin. He hmm. was just uh, softening. It was like the first. He was, he was kind of heavy artillery. They will follow up on it. But they definitely were helping him. Right, prepare our consciousness for this, uh, the the return. Uh, the Death Star was also um, identified with uh, Iapetus, which is a yeah, no. one of Saturn's uh, uh, moons, I think. Uh, yeah, but there's a lot of those out there, Mark. It's not right. like there's just a couple of them in our solar system. They're they're scattered all over. En Enki's empire. That's one of the things that they use mm -hmm. is these things because they're very hard, difficult to detect as being artificial right okay for at least using our technology so uh they 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 plan on bringing this thing back and parking it somewhere and reinstituting the reign of the gods for our own benefit of course uh, under and again I, i'm sure it'll be under false pretenses and as i said what really is bad about this for all of us is that it makes us a legitimate target not that we weren't before just that it increases our profile as a threat right in right. this yes. civil war and i don't know what his family is going to do about this i really don't so they're, they're immortal 
you think they they live forever or not physically no one does that's that's silliness um uh but uh, their souls do just like mm -hmm. ours do right. and i know people will disagree with that at least that's what i've learned recently i was kind of surprised that 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 link i sent you about the these people you know claiming to have inside knowledge about luciferians and other things um <laughs> i didn't realize that certain religious groups feel that we don't with it we don't have an immortal soul that we have to earn that through right. our obeisance or worship of the the one true god which is again that's not lucifer according to them this is this is all very convoluted okay i mean again the part of this is the problem is that we're there's these competing factions and we're caught in the middle of all this and we don't know who to believe so it but it's very appealing uh, let's say somebody in that, like in that video, he he was very close to becoming a full-fledged Luciferian and being rewarded very handsomely for doing their bidding. Mm -hmm. But then he he switched teams and he joined some religious other religious cult that claimed that they have the answers yeah. that there is is the true God and that they can grant he or it can grant true or immortality and riches beyond your wildest dreams okay so this is this doesn't get you out of the arena at right. all this doesn't help i mean the it's impractical in my opinion you're still fighting something that you don't fully understand right I, actually i think you i don't know if you did but wes penry wrote about that he wrote the uh, the death yeah. trap uh, about well that's another trap. thing though right but mark that's not that is yeah he actually okay so what he said was that there might be a way for us to exit not only this world, which has a soul trap built around mm -hmm. it, an energy field that has become more porous in recent times. He claims that that if you follow a certain procedure, it has nothing to do with religion. But if you if you're aware that there is a soul trap and that when you see the light and you see these so called guides or you know, you know, relatives, deceased relatives, whatever, saying, come with us, that that's a trap. That's a trick. It's another trick. They're going to get you to agree. They try and get us to agree to come back again and again and again and basically stay here in prison. So, yeah, he says that there there is a way out of the soul trap that we can re-enter the, the actual real universe and uh, become free again. I'd like to believe that. I don't know. Mm. I don't know if that's accurate. Right, 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 right. Uh, the term uh, archon. Let's let's go back to yeah. that, uh, the mind parasite. And uh, you 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 write and you said that uh, they leave scars on the soul. Uh, can you maybe develop on that? Uh, they parasites need a host, so we are the hosts. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So um, <laughs> again, it isn't just regular energy that we would normally be emitting from our soul through our into our body into throughout our DNA. Because there is a connection. It's not like the soul's in heaven and we're down here. There is, there's a direct connection, all the time. It's sometimes it's not very strong, but other times it is. Actual, um, actual photos, photographs have have been taken or posted of those mind parasites in our three yeah. dimension, right? Right, right, right. So, um, sorry. Well, you were asking me a specific question though. Uh, yeah, about the uh, the scars on the soul. That, that, oh, the, the scars. Uh, the mind yeah, I. I I actually said that to the, at some point to somebody, and I wasn't sure how I knew that. I think Castanetus wrote about it a little bit, uh, that they, these, they were feeding off of that. I'm not sure that it does leave scars, but I presume that is the case. That if they, Because some of us have been here a very long time. I mean lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And at some point, that's going to energetically disturb the soul. It has to. Okay, so... Um, it, it will, it, I do think that, that um, this is one of the reasons why some of us volunteered to come here and help change the, the level of consciousness or the, the vibration that's here from within. It's like any other military campaign. You always have some people coming in, and then you have a lot of other people supporting them. So right. sort of like boots on the ground like that. All right. Um, but but there was something else you asked. Uh, yeah, about the um, they need a host basically. So we're, we're oh, okay, hosts, right. Um, yeah, and those mind parasites. 
um, have been spotted. Uh, how, how have they been spotted uh, in our 3D? Uh, I know I interviewed uh, uh, Dr. Santilli with his concave telescope that took yeah. pictures. Um, well, he, but, he didn't know what those were. Right. I'm pretty sure he just was just thought there was some glitch in the system. But yeah, they they were originally photographed in recent times in the 1950s using infrared film in California in the desert. Uh, that was uh, Trevor Constable, and he was working with Wilhelm Reich and uh, taking pictures of the orgone generators. Right. And they were very concerned. Like you could tell these entities were watching him. In fact, if you read Reich, Wilhelm Reich's writings about that, he, he says he was being attacked by these, these entities. He wasn't sure what they were or where they were from, but he just could tell that they, they fed off what he called a, a, a negative energy, right? right? And that it was highly destructive. Um, and it wasn't just from humans. It was from like, you know, they could kill trees and dis disintegrate rocks. And I mean, they were really very highly destructive. But um, uh, that's the first pictures that I used in my in my art, my first article. And um, like I said, I saw them briefly in 1995. I'm sure the Gnostic shamans must have seen them in some altered state of consciousness. Uh, if we were healthy, we could probably see them all the time, and that would be very disturbing, obviously. Um, NASA inadvertently caught pictures of them, I believe, and I, that's also in my first article. They look like amoeba, but they're not tiny like amoeba. They, I think they can take pretty much any size, but they're always the same shape, and they always have that same parasitic thing where they're trying to feed off energy, which was something that happened with the NASA tether experiment. They swarmed over this thing when the energy was going crazy, and then the tether snapped. Supposedly, the energy went too high, and it's like a filament in a light bulb just burnt up, snap, right? But they were swarming all over that thing, and a lot of people think those are UFOs. I disagree. I disagree. I think those are the Archon Parasite. No, they were shown but, in, in an old Star Trek episode, uh, with the archons, <laughs> you know, the amoebas. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it was feeding up. It was just sucking everything up. It was sucking the energy out of everything. And as it did, it would grow larger and larger. And, I mean, look, I know that, uh, what's his name, Roddenberry, Gene Roddenberry, former L.A. police officer, was involved in uh, channeling sessions and that he was allegedly getting a lot of this insightful information or ideas from this this group this council of nine and um, it, so it's it's not surprising that these things actually some have some sort of correlation it actually makes a lot of sense it's like there isn't anything else going on why wouldn't there be some connection between all of these things because i mean reality is very holistic Mm -hmm. I know that we've been conditioned to believe everything is reductionist, mechanistic, broken down like a machine, you know. It mm -hmm. isn't. Everything is very much connected and holistic from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. and, and those mind parasites, can, can they uh, project or, or uh, 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 put beings, screen memories in, in people's minds, you know, like during hypnosis sessions, uh, many people, I've watched many... Uh, sessions of, of people uh, talking about reptilians, about about you know yeah. false guides, and, and this could they could they just be mind parasites uh, taking forms of, of of a being you know that has put in the implants in, in people's minds or body? Um, yeah, I I agree with that. Sure. Um, okay, you could touch on a couple things. The, the the Muslims say that everybody is born with at least one or more of these things attached, or what they call it assigned mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. They call them jinn. The Gnostics call them archon. It, it's it's the, the it's the root of the word monarch, right. which also happens to be the monarch program was all about mind control, right? MK Ultra. Right. So, but anyway, the 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 Muslims know about these entities that predate the Islamic religion. Uh, from what I've read, uh, Muhammad was actually, his whole family were in, deeply involved with the jinn mm -hmm. before he wrote the Quran or was, I think he channeled it, honestly. It sounds like he was completely illiterate and he just started, to, you know, it just came through him for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, we're all, we're always being influenced by them 
most of the time we're unaware. And they're, what people should understand is that they can, uh, when they speak to us, sometimes it'll sound like our own voice. Sometimes it'll sound like uh, the voice of, let's uh, say, a deceased relative um, or someone that we tr love. They're, they're very good at that mimicry and manipulation. So we have to be mindful of that pretty much all the time. And uh, the other thing is that they really, they need to provoke us so that we'll hurt ourselves or be like um, agitated. I mean, even if you're just angry all the time, that's still a form of harm that we do to ourselves that's enough that it will we generate that person who's angry is going to generate that level of, inf of energy that they that these parasites can feed off of. So the other thing is, even before all this spying, the, the, what they call the global surveillance system, now everybody's worried about, oh my God, you know, I'm being spied on all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, these parasites not only feed off the energy, they actually, and they can, they project thoughts into our mind. Oh, that's that's what, okay, sorry, sorry. back up. The Muslims say that these things are assigned to us at birth and they can whisper into the souls of men. Mm. Meaning that they can, this is, and this is now, okay, mental health profession would say that's schizophrenia. Right. The Catholics would say that's possession. Right, right. Okay, exactly. but what, all right, but just like any other illness or infection, there's various degrees. It's not like everybody is, is you know, 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, but everybody is being affected to some degree. Even if, like, for say example, if I was 100% healthy and free, the fact is, I'm around people who are not, so I'm still being influenced or affected by this right. infection. Yeah, exactly. And uh, um, um, there are many people in meditation practice that are being visited by beings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, try, try everybody is right. every. There's no because what? How are you supposed to protect against that? Like I told you, it's about consciousness. There isn't a firewall. Unless you unless you work at it, consciously put up a firewall, but what's that look like, right? Most people don't, first of all, here's the problem, Mark. Most people don't, and this was deliberate, they don't believe that these things exist. Lucifer, parasites, okay, none of that is real. So therefore, why would I protect myself from something that doesn't exist, you see? So that was the greatest trick they ever came up with, at least in modern times was getting us to believe they don't exist. The analogy for that is the Matrix, okay? Mm. I mean, there was a scene in there where Neo meets the architect and he tells Neo, this isn't the first Matrix and you aren't the first anomaly. And there was one Matrix where we actually let everybody know what was going on, but that didn't work well. They didn't produce for us. They, they, they It was like a passive aggressive. They became apathetic. They simply just refused to produce. You know, yeah. that was that was their defense. So they scrapped it and created a different one. But there has been multiple. Um, I know you might want to call it experiments, but in fact, it was um, genetic manipulation. The, the, like I said, there's a goal. OK, so so and they, they're trying. He has wanted to create this special forces unit. And so they had to do various levels of genetic manipulation before they, like prototypes, right? before they actually got to something that would, would serve their agenda properly. And that's what I was saying. When that happened during the age of Atlantis, they, his parents had to do something. And it's coming again. It's coming again. Absolutely. The, the, the whole thing about the secret space program, super soldiers, that started with the German secret societies. Right. But they were, this is before the Nazis came to power. But those secret societies, specifically Thule, I think it's called pronounced Thule Society. They, uh, yeah. Uh, Thule. Yeah? Thule, yeah. However you say it, T H U L E. Yeah. They claim that they were uh, receiving information from entities on the star Aldebaran. Right. Probably, there's another way to say it too, but I don't know. That's how I say it, Aldeburn, right? It, that's it, that's it, right. Mm -hmm. it's, it is the Eye of Taurus. That, according to Wes Penry, is where Enki has his headquarters. That is his court of his empire is there. That's where his royal court is. And naturally, he's the king of the empire. So it, it all starts to make sense now that, to me anyway, 
that that he he's been influencing things behind the scenes, uh, you know, promising all kinds of things to anybody that will participate in this, usually under false pretenses. He's not good at telling the truth. I mean, one of his titles is the father of all lies. Mm -hmm. He's also known as the father of the archons, but he has a problem telling the truth for multiple reasons. Uh, in any case, the 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 genetic uh, programming and this and this increased technology is not for our benefit. It's to serve his agenda. And the warfare that goes on here, and you know, every time we have a war, the technology, the level of technology keeps going up, right? This is not to this is to keep us not only divided but make us better soldiers, ultimately to serve him in this epic battle that he started a long time ago. Right, and the, 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 you know, thus, thus in Hollywood, that's helping the intel <laughs> and, and the agenda behind it with all those superhero yeah. Marvel movies. Right. You know, like, uh, it's, sure. It's a super super soldier with with uh, superpowers, basically. Yeah, Captain uh, America and all those guys. Right, right. Uh, re you remember uh, Herman Olbert, right, from the uh, yep. the father of rocketry and space travel. Yep. Uh, he yep. said, uh, "I'm mentioning his his famous quote: We cannot yep. take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields alone. We have been right. helped." <laughs> so basically, when he was at yeah. home, he replied, "The people of other worlds." And yep. this this is this is uh, this has been left unnoticed uh, today. It's just. <laughs> it's it's well, just a personal quote that you know. Um, th th nobody right. cares about those quotes, and we're being well, busy, yeah. we're being we're being ab uh, abducted, and and there's this whole UFO community, especially in the states, that's very very new agey, you know, and it seems to be totally uh, under mind control or or yes. under the, the the Stockholm syndrome that that says, yeah, they're helping our advancement, our spiritual enlightenment, and. And they, you know, yeah. they, they're they're here to make us evolve, and and they're all our fathers, basically. You know, and and each species that abducts, uh, uh, abductees, and tells them their their father. That this is the same thing as Enki. You know, yeah, uh, they can be greys, insectoids, reptilians. Uh, each species, or Pleiadians, or 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 Nordics, and they all, or tall whites, and they all say we're we're your creator. But right. Well, because everything in, in, in our DNA basically is it, it, it seems to be like a real cosmic genetic cocktail. Uh, 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 a zoo. Was, yeah. But see, that's because An Enki pulled in various. He captured various regions and turned it into his empire. So yes, right. you're good. Naturally, you're going to see all kinds of different humanoid mm -hmm. forms. But right. the thing is, ultimately, like I said about the creation of a universe, it isn't a big bang as much as it is a big bloom where a, a parent soul gets so mature that it, it, it releases all these other souls that then go off and choose their path on multiple dimensions. And some, okay, so, I mean, DNA is, is <laughs> it's in everything. It's not male, female. It's not reptilian, man. It's all of those things. It has a potential for all of things. And that's what our souls are, okay? It, it, they can take any format. But what is the ultimate goal here? I mean, my opinion is that we're supposed to be, be – we were created by a creator to be creative. All this other stuff is the distortion. This right. nonsense about being, you know, greater warriors and controlling, manipulating, de deviating, and destroying. It, it just – that is – that is an illness. I don't think that a creator god or goddess would ever uh, choose to destroy their own creation in that fashion. So um, this, that's the anomaly. Enki is, is an anomaly. Yeah, it's clearly an anomaly. And I think they're, they're kind of gearing everyone or the masses towards a war-mongering hive yeah. mind. And, and this is what a virtual reality is doing and AI. And uh, um, uh, the question is, um, if we we've all well, you were mentioning Al, Al, Al Debaran or Al, 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 Al Debaran. Uh, that's Al, how some people say, yeah, Al Debaran. Uh, right, um, uh, but you know, um, we, we can talk about the Nazis, uh, the Nazi officers or Nazi uh, officials, uh, um, uh, ladies that were sent from uh, from Al Debaran, uh, called the you know Maria Trotter, Sigrun, Gudrun, Heike. They they were the uh, the real Damon. Uh, right. 
or daemon or daemon <laughs> or demons, you know, uh, uh, yeah. sent to those those uh, Nazi dignitaries to influence them, uh, and they were looking for a cult. Uh, and Vimana's uh, 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 um, uh, plans and stuff in Tibet, and they were they, they were definitely using the uh, uh, the occult forces and energies to control the masses, like like you know mass hypnosis type of events, uh, like yeah. like Mussolini did in Italy as well. You know, so they they were like a great uh, occult uh, masters, basically Mussolini and and Hitler, because uh, they used. Well, yeah, but it, you, you Mark, you know, that's not just Germany was doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, all. All of the whole world. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Russia's got their own program. America, absolutely. Yeah. And it's I it's not it's not Bush. new. It isn't new at all. As I told you, it, the look. Like most people say Francis Sir Francis Bacon was a Rosicrucian right. on some level. At the very least, he was a Rosicrucian. I say he's a Luciferian, but he was the right. one that that had this vision for the New Atlantis, which became America, and it was deliberate. It, the whole thing was pl predestined planned out so and th this this so-called infiltration of the the great experiment of the you know the first free nation on the planet it's uh it sounds good but it, i personally i can't accept that i just feel that this is all more of the same nonsense that's been going yeah. on here they they constantly are baiting us into thinking that we're that we're free and that we can make choices to do these things when in fact they're constantly manipulating us to do stuff that's it's actually contrary to our own benefit Free will is the key, basically. So, uh, if if mm. there's there's a question, uh, um, um, <laughs> if we have already given away our free will, how does how can you believe that we we, we reclaim it uh, and and create a non-penetrable seal around ourselves? Yeah, that's if a good we question. If we have implants or in DNA uh, manipulation, oh yeah, uh, right. It's multiple layers, Mark. You know, no, you're right about that. They not only put implants, they're constantly poisoning us and distracting and provoking. Yes, it's difficult. Some people feel it's impossible. I mean, uh, and I don't blame them for feeling that, but it's nothing's impossible unless you believe it to be. That's part of that's part of my understanding of reality, how it really works. OK, so um, if you believe it's possible to protect yourself or more importantly, to declare yourself a sovereign soul, even in the midst of this insanity, Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first step towards reconnecting because uh, the web of light is still there. You know, like I told you, it's you, Enki's universe is synthetic and it's it's nested within the uh, the other, the organic universe. Right. That we think of as we think of that is that's all there is. Right. I don't think right. I don't agree with that, but that's what scientists tell us. OK, and they have a very, very narrow, limited view of it. They don't understand that it's not dark. It's all light. We just can't see that light. Just We're not briefly, permitted briefly, to see. Briefly for the audience, can you tell us the difference between the synthetic and organic worlds? You know, like uh, yeah, it's a mm. sure. It's it's a <laughs> it's what I was saying before about consciousness. Right. What what he did was he because he lost his ability to create with his consciousness slash energy slash matter. Okay. All the the, ver the the three primary things, it's just like a drop of water it can be a solid, a liquid or a gas. Consciousness can be either pure consciousness, energy or matter. It's all the same thing and it's all self-referential. Okay. So the organic universe is very conscious of itself and it's, and it's full of energy, light. And the matter is, it's of a different frequency. That whole thing is completely, I would say, a much higher frequency. It's unadulterated. It's not distorted. The synthetic universe that Enki created, which is very relatively very small, has a much lower vibrational rate. And this whole concept of this, there being a limit on the speed of light, mm -hmm. is an, is, a, is one of the one of the many lies that we've been told that we must believe. Also, the uh, time, as we know it, is a complete illusion. We know that, but we accept it anyway. We live by it, right? Just like the money system is a complete illusion. It's mm -hmm. not based on, on anything of real value. And yet it controls everything of real, real value. Wow, what an amazing trick that is. Mm. That would be sophistry at its very, very best. So yeah. those are the kind of things I'm talking about. When the, the difference is if you could step at, back in time to what this planet was like before it became incorporated or captured into Enki's universe, mm -hmm. his fake universe, is that people here um, didn't even eat food. I know that sounds weird, but we had the ability to 
Um, yeah, well, yeah, okay, you know how plants photosynthesize? Mm -hmm. it's, it, we call it chlorophyll, but I think it's deeper than that. Anyway, there is a chemical in humans that has been greatly diminished. But if you can imagine, we have a, a chemical that's similar to chlorophyll. If we had enough of it and things weren't so polluted, etc., we would actually be able to. Um, uh, it's like being plugged into the wall as opposed to running off a battery. We would literally be plugged into the entire creation. Which obviously there's plenty of energy there, right? The way we do it now is retarded, honestly. It's so, some Before people that, are able, some people are able to, um, to. I know, I've heard feed this. Feed off of light, the, you know, called prana. Yeah. And, uh, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Office, so. I know, but okay, look, that's a very rare thing. I'm not even sure it's real. I've read those accounts. What I'm saying is that all life was like that. At in the, sometime in the past, when I say symbiotic, I mean <laughs> there was no predation. There were no parasites. Everything was functioning properly because it was drawing energy from that web of light. It was being shared symbiotically, okay? And, and everything also was, um, those people were empathic. So that was another thing. You would never kill something or harm someone else because you would feel it 100%. 100%. More importantly, how could you kill something if it was telepathically connected to you? They're like, wait a minute, why are you going to, hey, you want to kill me? I'm, go I'm gone. You couldn't even do, you couldn't pull a stunt like that. Right. Back in those days. I mean, it's so different. It's hard for us to even conceive of it, Mark. So, uh, but, you know, for whatever reason, I've been able to, somehow put myself in that back in time or to that that way of life i can i can i can't stay there very long but i've been i've been able to project part of my consciousness back and that was the other thing too supposedly according to west we had what when, what we're calling remote viewing now is an innate ability that all humans have here that was originally given here. So we didn't really need technology. When we wanted to go Correct. someplace and visit some other place, we would just project a, a very small portion of our soul energy would go there and come back or remain connected. And we could, it's like, it was almost as good as being there. Good enough. Right. right? right. So they, they try to there's recreate a. That artificially. In Montauk, I artificially. You know, the Montauk yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's all, it's all a very bad distortion. Hmm bastardization, whatever you want to call it. But, and this is what I said before about ascension. How could that be ascension? If we're trying to get back to what we originally were, I would, and even calling it redemption isn't right. I would call it rehabilitation. When somebody's really ill and screwed up, that process of getting well is called rehabilitation. Right. Okay? So that's the way I see it. Right, 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 right. Well, bottom line, uh, what's your for example, your, your daily practice for staying clear and, and sovereign. <clears throat> uh, well, part of it is just trying to be happy. I know that sounds utterly silly, but um, it's important to be happy. It's part of our health and well-being. So um, I've there's there's different ways to do this. It's it, it, I've always said to people, it's important you try and spend a little time unplugging from society, uh, spend some time outdoors in nature without any distractions, that's very helpful. Um, I also practice three things as much as I can, which is to be calm, mm -hmm. to be kind, and to be creative. Those three things actually, I know it sounds overly simplistic, but those three things are positive and they're infectious. In other words, it, if you practice that around other people, it, it actually affects them in a positive way. And they will then proceed to, to continue on, whether they know it or not. It's, it's, it's like a domino's effect, but in a very positive way. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, so, like you said, you mentioned once that we, we connect into uh, all of creation uh, yep. and we can ra radiate uh, that light here uh, in the matrix. So. Well, that's a higher level. You and I discussed that off the air, but it's okay. If you want to just briefly, that would be a form of meditation, uh, consciously connecting to the web of light. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to be, yeah, you have to be calm and you have to be in a very peaceful, loving state. But more importantly, you have to be aware of where the connection is, is uh, through the, the pineal gland. 
That's the the crown chakra is what some people call it, but actually it's like it's a crystal tr transceiver. It's what uh, <clears throat> that's like a modem, okay? okay, that connects us to this web of light. So uh, most people, though, most of us, our pineal gland is 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 calcified, and more importantly, there's a lack of blood flowing through that area. Uh -huh. So there's things that we can do, like. Um, um, Obviously, meditation is part of it, but what are you meditating on? Are you trying to be mindful of nothing? Or are you trying to consciously connect to all of creation? I mean, first of all, you have to re recognize that there is something beyond all of this. Visualizing, allowing yourself to visualize that in your mind is a huge first step. And then seeing yourself being connected to that light and becoming that light. Um, as I say, there's a lot of different ways to to be, uh, increase the health of the body and the pineal gland but there's more importantly when you when we do the meditation to connect ourselves strongly intentionally to that web of light i think it's a very personal thing for me i just think uh um love that that's what kind of works for me is to be very loving and thinking that that's my extended family that's my that's my reality. That's the, the the really big picture, and I want to be connected to that. Now, at some point, when a person really connects strongly to that, they start to see beyond the illusion, and they can see reality is there is no darkness. This is this is so called out of body is not out of body. It's really just moving our consciousness, our perception moves beyond the physical into that other realm. Right. And okay, and that is reality. That's the permanent reality. This, all this is, like they say, it's illusion of Maya. And so, when you're, when we connect and we see the light or enlightenment, right? That's what the, not a great term, but that's what they call it. That's when we start to embody that. It's like we're plugged in, like a light bulb, and we start to radiate that level of of light here within Anki's matrix. And I'm pretty sure that's how the um, the soul trap started to get holes in. <laughs> right. And I'm pretty sure that that could be the ultimate. I mean, I'm starting to believe that that it, it, when enough of us start to radiate that light, the real light, mm -hmm. that it will it will collapse the matrix much quicker. Yes, yeah, like from the, the ins from the inside. The so what what? It's the yes. entrainment uh, effect, basically. Well, I, Rupert Sheldrake talked about this. I mean, I'm not sure how accurate a lot of his stuff is, but it's intriguing, okay? The hundredth monkey theory. Right. And the morphic field. So just think of it this way. If there's seven, just say roughly seven billion of us, if a certain number of us start to radiate that light, the true light, then it could grow exponentially. Like you said, there's a entrainment mm -hmm. or resonance if if others so if you have like just a small number do it and then more and more it grows exponentially whether they're aware of it or not but i mean that would be a very positive event obviously if we could pull it off i don't know but it's it's just it's intriguing right 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 yeah it is and, and it's worth trying actually sure <laughs> to bring well it, it doesn't have to be so yeah but it doesn't have to be like okay we're all going to meditate at, at noon today right. greenwich time i i don't think that it's I, I really feel like it happens when a person's ready mm. willing and able to do that because not everybody is you know and it sounds good but it takes a lot of effort and um but i i believe the outcome is worth it but again this is this is a completely separate thing we're individuals within the collective. We have free will, so you can only suggest this to people. You, you, you know, and, and um, it's it's the next level. Like I said, start off by being calm, kind, and creative. Mm -hmm. And those things sound simple, but honestly, Mark, they're not. They're really, really, really not. Especially in the way things are going in the modern society, they don't want us to do those things. Obviously, but it's it, but honestly, look, being kind is not it has nothing to do with religion politics or anything being calm is is very difficult but we know it's good for us it's just it's just difficult it's really difficult try it sometime when you're in traffic and and somebody's you know making your life difficult right, right. if they cut you off you freak out it's, it's just it's and those are the times when you're supposed to be calm it's easy to do while you're just sitting there by yourself in a room it's difficult right. when it those really challenging moments is when 
that's when you're really making a difference is staying calm in the middle of a crisis. Right. Okay. And the daily and noise being, environment, the noise around us with, with the, the fake news, the, you know, the, the, the bad vibes and frequencies that are being, being uh, sent to us on a daily basis. Yeah. In the middle of all this noise, uh, that that's when it's the toughest to, uh, to stay calm and, and disconnect, unplug from, from this environment, you know, uh, negative. Well, because here's the thing, the more that we do those things, the more easier it becomes like anything else. Mm. And the, and, and it changes our consciousness and our, the, the energy, the frequencies that, that we are change. And that's a choice. It's a very simple choice. And it, it, um, you don't have to have permission for that. Okay. <laughs> you really don't. You don't have to ask some authority figure. Hey, can I be calm, kind of created? And no. Okay. Do you want, can I, do I need permission to connect to the cosmos? No. You just have to make, put the in the effort. Okay. So, but I think most people don't realize they have that choice because they're, we're also badly distracted and provoked on a daily basis uh, that, that it's, it's difficult. So um, just putting it out there and I hope people will try and, and, and implement those, those things in their lives and just, just see for yourself. I mean, we could talk about it all day long, but until you actually start doing it, you know, you'll never know for sure if it's, if it's helping you or others around you. Um, and uh, yeah, with specific exercises, for example, and, and, you know, that you can practice daily um, on a regular basis. You could, um, can you give us well, one? Yeah. You know, okay, like I said before about being happy, right. uh, believe it or not, uh, this sounds really weird because I never used to do this until recently, is dancing. Right. It's it's my wife told me it's impossible to be angry when you, if you're dancing to music that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. It's I mean it really is weird. I I only started doing that recently and it moves the energy around in a way that's very positive and healthy mm -hmm. and happy. Uh, so right. what but but here's the thing. Whatever works for me may not work for you. You have to find these things. You just but for, it starts with an intention. Hey look, I want to be happy because I know that'll make things better in my life. As long as you're not hurting anybody, do what makes you happy whenever you can. However, you, how, whatever that is, because we're all unique in that regard. Um, the other thing is that uh, humming. Uh, right. Some people say, you know, you have to do this meditation at home. I, I tried that and it, yeah, it definitely will put you closer to that other realm, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's not practical. It's not like you can sit around for whatever, however many minutes or hours a day saying om and oh, yeah. vibrating your pineal gland. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. easier to, if you hear some music in the background, or if you, even if you hear it in your head, just hum to it as much as possible. And when I say hum, I mean, close your mouth, press mm -hmm. your tongue up against the roof of your mouth, because now you're, you're the, okay, so the roof of the mouth, inside that soft palate, there, when you press your tongue up against that, you're vibrating from underneath, you're vibrating your pineal gland. And that increases, that changes the frequency of it. Because we're being bombarded by all kinds of crazy frequencies, so why not take control of that and vibrate it at a frequency that you that makes you feel good? Right. Typically, most people listen to music that makes them feel good. Yeah. So, exactly. so just hum along with the music. Anybody can do this, by the way. Even if you're tone deaf, you could do this. Uh, just, just hum to the music with your tongue pressed up against the roof of the mouth. And, uh, you know, even if you do it a few minutes a day, it'll make a difference. It really does help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, 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 that's great. That's great. Uh, that's, that's better than all those questions I've had collected from, from friends and, and, uh, and, and, and listeners who said, how, how can we leave the matrix, uh, I, you know, and, and so forth. And how, how can we activate our DNA so we can leave, leave this, this hellish place and, uh, and and where are the vo vortices or vortex that we we can or pathways to other worlds and the roles yeah yeah, yeah. but mark we can but mark to, you know, what we're talking it's within ourselves <laughs> right well, i understand i yes. understand yeah. but there's no there's no reason to since we're here mm -hmm. what, what what the processes i'm talking about is alchemy or mm -hmm. transmutation if everything's just wave patterns or frequencies vibrations right well, we can change that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this again, this is what I'm talking about. It, you don't need permission. 
it doesn't even cost you anything unless you want to get some materials to make to, to be creative right right but honestly i found especially these days it's very simple to be extremely creative with very little money and time you know and share it with everybody that's important okay being calm being kind be sharing your creativity with others it, it has this exponential thing right mm -hmm. so now other people are thinking about oh oh yeah i'd like to create something yeah i should be kind to people too you know and or yeah i really should calm down you know, or maybe, hey, you know what? I want to connect to the cosmos. I'm tired, of, sick and tired of television, internet, fear porn, whatever. Right, right. You know, yeah. take take time out, do that, and see for yourself if it's, it's you know, here's the thing. Be patient, too. You got to be patient. We have been so programmed for so long by all this crap. It's really difficult to, to take those first steps. It always feels difficult like anything else, right? But as you start to build a little momentum, it becomes easier, easier, and more pleasurable. You start to see a bigger effect, mm -hmm. right, right, beyond your immediate domain. And um, uh, the, uh, well, the uh, end result is we do, we, I feel we are supposed to be participating in the healing process. We're just not told how. Okay, again, this is one of the reasons they don't want us talking to the divine, benevolent beings are not welcome here. Because the Anki's people know that if we had even five minutes with a divine being, we, we would be, you know, we'd be right up to another level. Right. You, you, see, you see this with people, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, I know this is is documented when a person goes to see a guru mm -hmm. it's it's like it's like concentrated meditation when they're, they meditate with the guru they they have a much accelerated uh learning curve or whatever you want to call it um it raises their vibration because they're like you said there's a resonance between the so-called guru master and the mm -hmm. student and this this is why we're not allowed the, all the so-called stuff that we're seeing the ascended masters and uh, the most of that is complete uh, distortion right right because they don't want us to think independently or do things that like what we're describing here which are very simple but have a very profound effect if we if we continue to participate in that that's why they sent those 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 new age gurus and movements, you know, uh, to yeah. try to entrap people into into one single energy that's being distorted and deceived, and 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 they, they cultivate that and and, uh, and and feed feed off of that, and and also uh, um, uh, prevent people from you know really awakening uh, themselves, but on their own. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the one of the biggest traps i see about that mark especially when it comes to these religious or cultic groups is that typically the leader always says i know the truth the other guys don't okay so this is this is, creates more of a division it's hmm. it's it, that's usually for me anyway it's one of the reasons i don't join anything i am not political religious none of that because i know that they've all been compromised and that right. they all tend to to pull people apart. I mean, the human family here is being divided by that those those groups intentionally to serve a bigger purpose. Let's say never tell you about the the real agenda. In my opinion, that's that's a, that's part of the problem here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, so those groups amongst humans are. Or compromise that I, I totally agree with that um, and the, the, the beings that we see and that so many uh, contactees or, or channelers are seeing it all are also deceptive right because the ones that are allowed to connect with with people inside the matrix are usually false or, or not not really divine beings right. um, uh, but, but they uh, still appear like they are they can yeah. do that because here's the thing they originally were they're just ill right and they want us to remain ill too so that that we will serve them and their agenda right okay so and again this is why they don't want us to know this because they realize that we would <laughs> we would reject that we would resist we would and we would unite against them 
And it's already happening. Like I said, I see it. I know that for a fact. That's why they're acting so increasingly desperately these days. And every time they protest even louder and do even more crazy things, it it wakes even more people up and say, wait a minute. Uh, I don't want to be like, I don't want to work with these people. You know, they have no respect. Uh, it's just it's it, it's just a huge turnoff. Okay. And I, I think they're digging their own grave. <laughs> but the problem is, in my opinion, they don't have a backup plan. They can't improvise. They're, like I said, their consciousness, there isn't any creativity there. There's no compassion. There's no integrity. And, and that's not a judgment on them. That's simply an observation of their state of being. Their consciousness has been compromised. So they can't come up with the, you know, alternative contingency plans like somebody who's who's not infected. Right. Well, which brings me back to the, your alien agenda uh, <laughs> uh, 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 thing um, or ET uh, agenda. Uh, yeah. uh, is there such a thing as the uh, uh, Galactic Federation of Light or, or so forth? And these, these Ashtar no. uh, guys yeah. and, you know, that are not being, not that I'm aware of. I mean, yeah, they they allegedly exist, but I don't think it, they're for our benefit. I think it's another way of fragmenting certain portions of humanity and say, well, Ashtar said this, you know, and the other guy's like, no, 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 Bashar said, and it's like, come on, people. Uh, th this is not helping to unify us whatsoever. And I don't know, again, we can't verify any of this stuff. But, you know, having said that, I do feel like there are times when benevolent beings do tr do their best mm -hmm. to help us. And the thing is, they never, as far as, at least in my life, I've never seen them identify themselves at all. They don't want any publicity. They don't need it. And I also feel it's very dangerous for them to come here on any level. It's very painful even because they are still empathic. It's very, very difficult for them to, to even reach, you know, remotely into our realm here. You know, I mean, think about it. If you had to go to visit somebody in prison, wouldn't that be very especially if there was a loved one, wouldn't you feel right. like pain? I would. I would feel very troubled by the whole thing. So, um, and that's not an ex that doesn't an excuse. It's not like you, they can't do anything. I, obviously, they can. And I know a lot of people said, why don't they do more? Right. I think it's very subtle. What they do, based on my experiences, it's very subtle. And I, I'm sure they have more than one contingency plan on how to deal with this uh, rehabilitation program. Because mm -hmm. some people have asked me, well, why don't they just kill Lucifer? <laughs> uh, okay, look, it's the, they're, we're all family. And so is Lucifer and all the Luciferians. They're all from the same family. You don't just go annihilate people in your family because they're sick. Mm -hmm. Even if they're dangerous, it's, that's, not a, that's not the first choice here. Okay, it isn't. They want them to get well and, you know, reunite, rehabilitate and reunite. I mean, that's that's not, this is not that's not a conspiracy, okay? That's a desire right. for us to all be one healthy, happy family again. It's really it's not a stretch, okay? That, that, that's why there's so many people or or uh, uh, Draco-like beings, you know, and or or, yeah. or demon lovers and who who have their moments when they talk about redemption and try to go towards the light, you know, because they feel yeah. this there's this this type of of judgment day coming uh coming soon and, and you know what do you think is there going to be an event or is there going to be an artificial uh event like a cosmic event uh, a planetoid uh, that's gonna maybe uh, project uh mass uh holographic hypnosis over millions of, of of humans to try to take control of them again or like a blue bean type of, of project you know like the blue bean uh, yeah but it won't be coming from our government uh the whatever mm -hmm this return of the gods is going to look like, I can't say for sure, okay? But I do know that the Vatican and the UN will take the lead, the Pentagon will follow, obviously, and the, whatever, the financial markets will have to f come after that. But the, here's the thing, I do think that they, uh, this is gonna fail miserably at some point because they're lying. They have no integrity and people are already, quite a few people are, very awake and aware of this deception, this huge grand deception. So uh, even though, and the other thing is, 
I, what I was shown when I asked, what I, oh, I was hoping I was in touch with the divine beings when I asked this, how, did he, how are you going to fix this problem, okay? Right. I, they showed me that there was these waves of energy that were going to wash over the planet and a, awaken people's consciousness by shifting the vibration from one that was very low and not very well connected to one that was very high. It's not going to happen overnight. It's, it's, it's a process. Wes Penry talks about this. Mm -hmm. He said between 87 and 2012, there was, a, there was these waves or gradual increasing of the energy slash consciousness on this planet. Everybody that ex has passed through that or was born after 2012 is a different person altogether. It's because we're, we're up here now. Okay, so as more of these waves hit us, and they're even more intense, it's going to spike. There's going to be these spikes in consciousness, which means, again, and the, the, the Luciferians know this. They know that our consciousness is, is being uh, rehabilitated, shifted back to being connected, and we're seeing through the lies. It's harder and harder for them to lie to us, control us, manipulate us, etc. So... At some point, what I saw coming was there would be this tipping point or a, a moment where enough of us would be completely, sort of like in the movie um, They Live. You know, you right. put on the glasses and right. boom, you see, oh, whoa, my God, where did all these aliens come from? It's it, That's a terrible analogy, okay? But it's like that. It's like that. It's something is going to happen, and it's it, it, it didn't, it's not going to happen. Over, look, it may seem like overnight to us. But this is something that they've been worked on gradually over time for our benefit. They knew that it would be, there's no way enough of us would even be able to handle that level of intensity if it happened just overnight, you know, a very short time. So they've been gradually, gradually, gradually acclimating us to these higher levels of consciousness and vibrations. And at some point it's going to be like, Point of no return. It's like, wow, you, you know, a lot of people, most of the people are just going to see it for what exactly what it is. It's mm -hmm. all going to be out in the open, and they're going to, at that point, they have to make a decision. Do I want to continue serving the Archons knowingly? Okay. Or do I want to move back into the real universe and be free to be a sovereign soul again and continue on my path as a creator, a seed of light, a god? A God, not God, a God, okay? There's a difference. Right. right. And it's, it's not about religion, not to start a, I want to become God to start a religion. No, I, I don't think so. I think our, our, our potential is to create. We were creator, created by a creator to be creative. The seed has all, there's an old Hawaiian saying, it's, it's the, 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 the tr <laughs> sorry, the tree is in the seed. No, oh, no, the fruit is in the seed. Right. The fruit is in the seed, okay? It's what I described before. The seed has all the information of the tree. The tree came from a seed. Dink, dink, dink. And that perpetuates under the right conditions. And that's what we are. That's what we really are. Not just all this fake crap that we've been told. So, yeah. So, this is the choice. And this is why we're having these conversations, Mark. It, it's not about entertaining people or trying to provoke them or whatever. We're trying to help put things into the proper context to lend some clarity to a, a situation that has been convoluted for far too long, intentionally, okay? We have been misled on many levels for far too long. Mm -hmm. So when we have, we have to try and bring some clarity to this situation. It's, it's not, not easy, but it's working. I, I know it's working based on the, the feedback, the emails I've been getting from people privately. I know people hear these conversations and it makes sense to them and it's helping them uh, uh, feel empowered, motivated to participate on a, on a much more positive level. Right. Okay. And I do think exponentially, we've, I feel after 2012, we'd already reached a tipping point for the collective, but it's not over yet. Okay. Obviously, or we, we wouldn't even be talking about it, but it's, it, the difference is, look, for many years, I felt I was fighting an uphill battle. After 2012, which was a crazy ass year, really, uh, I feel like it's it, the momentum is on our side, and we're moving down the other. The slope is like downhill. It's not over, but it's easier. It's easier to work the downhill with that kind of uh, uh, momentum on our side now. Right. Okay, that's all.
Uh, yeah, yeah, and 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 we have to beware of uh, all those deceptive messages saying, you know, we're, we're we've been freed, all all the bad guys. Oh. Are yeah, the they bars. blew up the bases, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 which brings me back to this: all, all, all those messages from the the uh, secret space program former super soldiers like Corey Good and 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 so forth. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. what, what what do you think of those? Not much. Okay, I mean anybody. Well, look, here's the problem. It's like right. when you're brought into a a secret program right. for for a period of time, and then you're 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 released into the public to tell us about it. That's not a secret program. Right. That's that's mind control. That's that's social engineering. That's manipulating the mass consciousness. I mean, nothing against anybody personally, but I, this is what I told you before. Most of what we're discussing here is speculation. Obviously, if Lucifer is the father of all lies, what are we going to be fed on a regular basis? Lies on top of lies on top. You know, there's a thing about uh, psychopaths. Not only are they, they have no empathy, they have no problem lying. And when they feel like they're being caught in a lie, they'll tell another lie to cover up the other lie. And, they, and it just keeps going like that, right? And at some point, you don't even know where the, lie, the first lie started, it's like, wow, it's, 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 it's completely disorienting. Uh, again, the, it's really hard to find the proper context. They don't want us to know what, what's going on for real. And so even if we discuss it, if what I'm saying is accurate, I know it sounds completely strange to people. You know, and and um, I, I I understand if people challenge me, it's like, well, how would you know this? What makes you think you know? I, I don't. I, I worked very hard to try and figure this out and share the information. And I believe that's one of the reasons that I've had success on multiple levels, getting information that other people missed. The reason being is that I promised these divine beings that we're all related to that um, I, if, if I was given access to this information, that I would not censor it or alter it or withhold it. Okay, I just said, if you give me the information, I will share it without any kind of censorship or agenda. It doesn't mean that I'm right. It just, you know, obviously I can, I'm, can be wrong. But I don't think so. I wouldn't even say it. And the other thing is, if, like I told you before, if I get new information, and I'm always getting new information, if I get some new information that I feel is even is more credible, I will put that out there as well. Okay, because it's not about me. It's not about my ego. I'm not starting a church or, you know, running for a political office. None of that. I, I'm just like everybody else. We, I want us to get well. And I, I see the problem pretty clearly. That much I know for sure. Okay, because the problem was shoved in my face. And the perpetrators then started following me around in ways that I unintended consequences. I don't know if they realized this was going to happen or not, but they pissed me off. I felt they had no right to invade my privacy, you know, and then trying to manipulate me. It's like, well, who the hell are you guys? What do you want here? Why are you sneaking around? If you're so freaking high and mighty, why do you have to, why are you hiding? Right. What are you hiding? Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not going to give me a straight answer. Well, screw you. I'll find my, I'll find it anyway. You know, yeah, I, exactly. I look, if it, if it freaking kills me, I'm going to find out. Okay, I, that's just how I am. And he's like, you don't screw with me and think, you, you know, that I'm not going to react to that. I hate it when people lie to me. And it's not like I hate them. I just, the, their behavior motivated me in ways I don't think they understood or, or saw coming. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, 2012, well, you know, we all know now, well, <laughs> most of us are truth seekers. No, uh, the sur the survivalist uh, movement uh, uh, used that uh, against yeah. the, the the real Maya's uh, uh, intent to d d disclose that there's going to be a, a shift in frequencies and not the end of the world. Uh, <laughs> which but which, the end of Enki's empire is the beginning of the end of Enki's empire, at least on this world. Right. That's what I really feel that how that's that's the bigger picture that nobody wanted to talk about. They or they couldn't for whatever reason couldn't disclose that. Right, right, right. It, it it seems like you know you said it didn't start in 1947, but oh, God it, no. It, there seems to be um, uh, 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 1947 seemed to be a, a real high impact wor uh, 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 year on on this modern world today, as far as the mm -hmm. control system 
is concerned uh and ufology is concerned like like it all started with roswell and it started with this virtual reality uh it was the year of, of admiral Byrd's uh, operation high jump you know uh, against the nazis in 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 antarctica and uh yeah. uh this was important because the because it, it, it led the the nazis into uh the u.s's uh uh, uh, industrial intelligence, military, yeah, uh, and military right, they came to conflict. NASA and the CIA, etc. Yes, it's right. true. But you know, also they, there's been a few crashes uh, besides Roswell that year. Uh, th th there has been UFO waves everywhere, and as far as the technology technology was concerned, uh, ho ho uh, the hologram, the first hologram, was invented. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, there were so many things that year that which made me, you know, makes me uh, leads me to believe. This this year was the start of the the, the modern uh, control system for Enki and 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 maybe there was a turnover in 2012 because he went too far since 1947. Um, uh, there was a uh, basically the, uh, uh, the, the 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 Cold War started in 1947. Um, uh, a, a carbon 14 datation star, uh, was invented in 1947. Uh, the first. <laughs> satellite picture of the earth by nasa in 1947 uh, yeah. there was so many things invented in 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 in, in 1947 that, it, that that which leads me to believe there was it was the, the start of the, the modern control system uh uh in technology at least um and, well um, it, i i don't yeah. i hear you but i don't think so um no. the the technology was always there oh yeah it's yeah. it's just that there's there's a timeline to his right. agenda Right, and right. that's why, under the pretense of global warfare, mm -hmm. they were are integrating more of the technology and control of us as warriors right. for Anki's empire. We don't; most of us don't even know that Anki exists, right? Or right, Lucifer. But the people who do are very well aware of it, and they're getting rewarded for it, and they just participate. But it is a global empire that's connected to a galactic empire, even though it's re relatively small and I impotent, in my opinion. Um, it's very dangerous, extremely dangerous, because it's psychotic. And um, so, yeah, they started ramping up in order to achieve a timeline. Has there been a pushback? Of course. The, the, the benevolent ones are trying to buy time so that they could um, rehabilitate us rather than annihilate us okay right. I, I i hesitate i don't even like saying this because it freaks people out and i'm not trying to scare people i'm just ex trying to explain the way i see it mm -hmm. okay i and it's it's not a pretty picture but there's no reason to get panicky about it there's it's not like you can hide from it there's no place to hide right <laughs> Exactly. There's no no place to hide, and and the best place, uh, our best guys are uh, basically our higher selves, I think. So there's no middleman between. There was there 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 used to not even be a lower self mark. I mean, yeah. that yeah. was a creation of a synthetic creation of Anki. Right. We right. there was no such thing as a lower self or a higher right. self or a subconscious or like, you know what I mean from the There's, conscious. Mind. It's uh, that's of all of that inside the prison, though, behind the bars, behind bars. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but there's a yes, but like like they were saying in the movie The Matrix, it's a prison for your mind. Right. Exactly. Okay, yeah. and that's yeah. what it is because consciousness exactly. is so it, it's so important. What I described about consciousness is that that's where it all comes from. Everything that we see, everything that we are, is these these vibratory patterns, these waves. And so on a physical level, that's that's who we are. That's what that's what we embody. But on a soul level, we are also generators of those waves. And we ha therefore we have to take responsibility for what we create mm -hmm. or destroy with using using the, our soul energy, consciousness, waveforms. OK, that's that's really <laughs> There isn't anything bigger than that. But this, again, this is one of the reasons they don't want to even think about it because they know at some point we'll go, wait a minute, that's what I am? And then you start experimenting with it and then you become like more in control of it and then you're like, pretty soon you're like, they can't even mess with you because you know what they're doing and you know who you are and where you are. And it, it, this is, 
this is not difficult to understand. It's difficult to implement um, this in, in, in your – and here's why. Because like I told you, a lot of us have been recycled here for so long. It's, it's like even when we get the opportunity to leave – Right. It's a lot. I was told, I, this is really disturbing to me, Mark. I have a hard time even describing this. Mm -hmm. I was shown that a, a portion of hum, humans here, given, given the opportunity to, to become free again and healthy, would choose not to. Right. The analogy, I, I, it really, it's hard for me to even think about this because it just seems so insane. Well, it's to me, like, it's to like me. a captive animal in a zoo, and if you release them, in the wild yeah they don't survive well right they don't survive well but it's the same is true for a human being that's been in prison too long we know this for a fact that that when they're released from prison mm. they do not feel comfortable outside the prison and they will commit a crime to get back into prison and qu prison as quickly as possible obviously right. that's not everybody but yeah. we know that it happens okay and I, the reason I was shown this is was sort of to not not only to help me be prepared for that, because I can't even imagine not not taking the you know when you get the opportunity to be free, why wouldn't you, right? right. Well, there's a reason. There's a reason, and the and the and the only reason I'm telling people publicly is because the odds are very good that someone you know or love or care about will make that choice, and it's not up to you or me to tell them. Hey, wait a minute! You know, you can't make that choice. Actually, they can, and you cannot violate their free will. That's a that's a it's just not permitted. Okay, it's one of the reasons that the benevolent beings are having a hard time with us, is because we have chosen to to do things to. to in other words, the choices that we've made, they cannot undo. That would be a violation of our free will. They won't do that, even though they know those choices were horrible. Like, for example, nuclear bombs. Right. Okay. Certain ones of our in leaders said, oh, you know, that'll protect our country from the enemy, right? Okay. Well, once they made that choice, even though it was affecting everybody negatively, the benevolent beings, you know, they, they, their hands were tied to some extent. Yeah, yeah, but only a few of the so-called elite or psychopathic elite uh, make the I know. choice. You know, I they, understand they that, but be, here's 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 where it gets tricky, Mark. Right. The loophole is this: there there are representatives, they are our so-called leaders. They are doing what they call a, they have a yeah right they. <laughs> uh, what is that political term? What is that political term? They have a mandate. Mandate, but okay. it's a synergy. Uh, it's not even. A I, I understand that, but it's like, okay, it's a handful of people in a in in the Pentagon said, you know, Mr. President, we need to do this. Okay, so they reach out and whatever, and then once they start the program, um, people are said, yeah, that was horrible what you did to the Japanese, but we had to do it. They justify it. They justify it in their mind. So the basically, they're not basically. They are. They're agreeing to it. A right. lot of people said, oh, we had to do that. We had no choice, hmm. and which takes it to the next level. You see, it, I told you this is like a nine-dimensional chess game. It's not that – that it starts to get really complex on some level. If you, if you want to look at it, if you really want to peel back the layers. And, and, and at each presidential election, which is, you know, in, in the U.S. or elsewhere, we, we're going to vote in, in about 30 days here for – the next uh, I saw that, yeah. uh, French clown uh, as president. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> puppet, yes, puppet, I think. Puppet, right, right. Well, you know, ours uh, today is a clown, but uh, oh, anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that too. The, the thing is, the thing is, each each election uh, brings up uh, is, is part of deceptive uh, uh, external savior uh, uh, speech. Yes. You know, like, like they, they, yes, uh, uh, they. I mean, they they're, um, they identify Trump as the, the you know for for some of in the ufology field. I saw so many messages go by. Yeah, he's the new representative for benevolent uh, ETs, and he's with Putin, working with him with, for uh, you know to save the world and and so forth. And 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 all you know all he's able to do today is build a wall with Mexico. Um, so <laughs> it's it's just, it's just so such nonsense. Which each election, yeah. I mean, uh, we don't have the ET. 
uh, ET uh, a topic here because it's a non-topic in France. Ah. They're so nuts and bolts and and yeah. so uh, uh, dumbed down by, by the, uh, uh, the occult government behind uh, I mean, uh, deep state here is strong. I think it's one of the strongest in Europe. Um, you know, only a few more minutes. And, and uh, but how do you explain that? Uh, that, you know, uh, he, uh, they put words uh, that he didn't even, didn't even utter uh, in his mouth, um, you know, for Trump, as far as we're concerned. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that, the deception it, goes it, very, it, very far, though. It, you know? it, yes, yeah. because yeah. it's, it's all about managing us right. as subjects of an illegitimate evil empire mm -hmm. that most of us don't even know it exists. So they, they have to maintain it somehow. And a lot of it is psychological warfare, social engineering, mind control. Mm -hmm. we, there's all these names we can put on it. But the bottom line is this, that we have to serve the empire. The best way to do it is covertly. Hmm. to manipulate us into agreeing to it so a lot of times they they do it by scaring us mm -hmm. and it's pretty easy to do that and also um once you you create a problem and then you offer the solution which they do all the time hmm. then that takes it right down the middle path it, it so it's it's a way of leading us by the nose it's the hegelian doctrine actually, actually. Yeah, right, yeah. The, the, the right, left, have, middle. The, the people don't even have uh, to say say so for any any no. uh, state decisions for the, uh, since two thousand seven here in France, I know. for example. Uh, I you know, know that. people voted no uh, in the referendum uh, against uh, Europe. You know, right. joining the European Union, right. uh, which is under you know the the, gov the, 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 the U.S. you know governance uh, and and the, the new world order, but. Uh, and, and since then, since they say no and they join Europe, we, we haven't had to say so in any war uh, making decision or any, you know, war campaign decision or anything, anything uh, 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 statewide. So there's there's no say so uh, uh, for the people. <laughs> it's not we the yes. people, it's, it's them the no. so, <laughs> Right. And that's why they're, but that's why they're in positions of power. Right. Because they are Luciferian, whether they know it or not, they're behaving like Enki, Lucifer, and they're they're perfectly suited for those positions of authority over the subjects of the empire. It's not about democracy. It never has right. been. That's a, that's an idea. It's like baiting, you know, putting the carrot in front of the horse. Right. You, you bait debate people to be productive and compliant. Uh, but this is again. Look, I, I, this is why I don't participate in, in politics and religion because it's 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 futile. Right. It, it gets us totally. nowhere. In my opinion, I've never seen anything positive or beneficial coming out. You could argue on small scale social things. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Whatever. But in the long term, it's all about controlling us to serve this other agenda that is, in my opinion, it's been covert for far too long. So. Uh, this is why we were talking, this is why we're talking about how, what are the things that we can do without asking permission or needing any kind of permission? And even if they spy on us, it's like, hey, guess what? I'm just being calm, kind, creative and connecting to the cosmos. Screw you. Is you going to make that illegal too? Good luck. Good luck with that. You know, it's like, I mean, I could sit there in a prison cell and do that, honestly. What did it, it, bombard, bombard us with with well, all those I know. all those electromagnetic waves and 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 those big antennas are here for for that you know I, I, I yeah, they're everywhere that's what the cell towers repeater towers are about is right. changing our frequency to keep us from connecting not only to the cosmos but especially to one another if we're mm -hmm. going to connect with one another it has to be all controlled and manipulated social media is not it's it's anti social media. Okay, that was not only a, a great way to spy on us, it's, a, it's another way to antagonize us and turn us one against the other. Right. Not, so, so where's the benefit in that? It's, mm -hmm. There isn't any, not for the average healthy human spirit. It, it, it's, it's all against us. And you know the thing is, I, I find this very revolting, is the conspiracy. Not all conspiracies are theories. You and I conspired to do this show. It only takes two people right. to agree on something, and that is technically a conspiracy. It happens every day. 
Right. Okay. We just don't use that terminology. Or you could say, oh, they colluded. Whatever you want to call it. The, the, the language is important. People need to realize that this is a way they manipulate our consciousness. It's not only through the symbols, but through the, the language. So we have to be more, I think, I feel it's important that we use very specific terminology when we're communicating these concepts because the, the, the implication of all this is enormous, okay? It's, it really is. And I'm not trying to, I don't want anybody to feel intimidated. Okay. I want people to walk away from this feeling empowered and realizing that they do have a choice, even though we've been told we don't, by authority figures, screw them. We do have a choice. It's imp And part of the thing is we, we can't be sovereign unless we choose to be. Right. right now, most of us don't even realize that's a choice. They've none, most people I know have never said, oh, I'm a sovereign soul of... Uh, of the cosmos that that doesn't even make sense to them it's like what are you talking about hmm. so yeah. it, it, uh, these are all good things honestly mark i i'm trying to focus more on the solution these days because i think a lot of people re realize there's a problem or it, it may seem like unrelated i know they want us to think all this stuff is not connected but it is everything is connected you you, you know unless you choose to see it otherwise yeah we're all interconnected and and all those fields are connected uh, yeah i yep. totally agree on it uh, yeah. i try i'm trying to work towards that and and you know make people aware uh that this is the truth well at least there's the truth we don't need to invent it only lies need to be invented i guess <laughs> well, you know what? That's a loaded term, though. A false right. versus truth. Uh, right. I prefer the term accurate. Accurate. Right. So, something is either accurate or it isn't. Because right. truth is very subjective. That's the, right. the, the term we use. It's Perception. like love. Well, hey, I love ice cream. I love my dog. What the, what the hell am I saying? You know, it's like, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's, it, this is done intentionally to us to make us sort of dumb down our level of communication and our consciousness. Mm. So we can, but we can change it. Again, I, like I said, it's really not that difficult. It's a choice. It's a choice. It takes effort to, to reverse it. Mm. But we can do that. And here's the other thing, honestly, as we get closer to the whatever, the great awakening, rehabilitation, it's okay when you get up against something to ask for help from a from a legitimate divine entity mm -hmm. how you connect with it that's completely up to you but here's the difference you will know the difference i find is when they do not manipulate they don't hide they don't manipulate they just help if they say they're going to do something they will do it maybe not when you want it or how you want it but you'll notice that they are watching. They are connected to all of us because we're all family. And they right. do care. They really do care. Um, uh, one of the messages that was given to me, I feel, by divine beings was that, that their love for us is never ending. They will never give up on us. You know, yeah. They will never stop trying to help us. But there's, but there are parameters that they have to work within. Again, like I told you, the main thing is not to violate our free will. They won't do it. They can't. They mm -hmm. can't. But th the things that they do for us are very subtle, and yet they have a profound effect. I mean, at least it has in my life. And right. I think it does in other people's life. Sometimes, we, a lot of times, we don't always recognize it, especially when it's happening. We don't, we're so caught up in whatever that crisis is, right? We don't always see it. But they are around. They do care, and um, that, it's okay to to connect with them. We we, we can actually perceive them uh, and and f identify that they're here when when we have like positive synchronicity events happening yeah. in our yep. lives. You know? Yes, so, yes, exactly, Mark. Because I remember when I was uh, I was up against a wall with this this thing about the parasites. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. I couldn't get past some something was just blocking me. So I, I reached out to these the benevolent ones and I said, could you please help me? And but I you know I didn't expect I don't expect instant answers. It's not instant messages even in you know. But shortly after that I started to find 
like you said, these synchronicities. I was I was picking up books that I'd read years before and seeing mm -hmm. it for the first time like I'd never seen it before. And suddenly it made so much more sense to me. So I do feel like that they're, they're very subtle in that way. But if you right. especially if you ask them, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it they that opens the door for them to being more um, interactive with us. Right, right. But not, not necessarily through a prayer, right? Not in the prayer. Well, no, that, that's, no, that's that's going back to religion. It, right. Worshiping, worship means to work for. Right, praying, right. praying has a double meaning. Pray mm -hmm. is what you do when you're a predator. Right. You, I mean, excuse me, you look for prey. If you're a predator, you look yeah, for, for prey. prey. Right. I know it's been turned into a religious term, but honestly, the, the archons, that's what they do to us. We are their prey. We are their, right? So, yeah, you have to, we have to be careful that we're not being preyed upon every time we open ourselves up to like, save me, you know? Well, <laughs> I, the, the benevolent ones aren't going to save anybody. They will right. assist us to get yeah. well. But they don't need to save us. They need us. They, they they will help us to to rehabilitate to get well. But I mean, look, when a person goes into a hospital and they save my life, you know, I'm bleeding to death, whatever. Okay. But you you know they can't do anything without your permission. Oh, well, unless you're completely out, unconscious, right? right? But they typically have to get your permission in order to work on you. Right. And if they don't, they're they're up a creek. Legally, they're screwed. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the same thing. And, and you know, it's because it's there's a reciprocity. We have to choose. We have to exercise our free will. It's it's much bigger than most people understand. Some people don't even think it exists. Right. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it's so violated here. Well, it's not. It's not. It, our consent is violated. Basically, we're, we're being lured into it's, believing. It's demented. It's been distorted, Mark. I right. told you this is, and this is why Hollywood plays such a huge role. Yeah. This is what I'm outlining in my next book about Malibu, uh, mm -hmm. and meeting Lucifer there, and and showing that Hollywood is all about sophistry. It isn't not about entertainment. It's mm -hmm. about entrainment. What right. you were saying before, they want us to think and feel and act a certain way. The movies are called, and television is called programs. For a reason. Entrainment, entrainment and disclosure as well, because you see, you know, movies like uh, uh, The Matrix or yeah. Ascending uh, Jupiter and, and so many others, uh, they're disclosing right. what they're doing, what, what we live in <laughs> and, and what, what they're, they're doing to us. And, and we think it's sci-fi, science fiction, and it's not. And, and no. basically, you know, so that way our, they, they're getting our consent because we know what they're doing. <laughs> well, no, well, and not only do we know what they're doing, yeah. we collectively agree it's not really happening so it's okay see right. if that's it, it can't be happening so i'll just i'll just agree that it's you know hey i was entertained by that you know it, it can't really be happening. it's just like the archons and the hey, lucifer they, they don't exist that's just a that's just a figment of other people's imaginations our ancestors were all you know what nuts they just they just dream this stuff so it's yeah it's a very subtle very sinister way of twisting our perception of reality and getting to tacitly agree that those things are not worth concerning ourselves about. Mm -hmm. It's really clever, very, very clever, but it's cruel. It's extremely cruel and only a psychopath um, could pull off a stunt or a series of stunt like that on their fellow man. Right, 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 and that's why it's so, uh, it's so f uh, filled with violence. I mean, you know, oh yeah, righteous violence is just is just amazing. Uh, the amount of, I mean, you see in Star Wars that they, they blow up planets with a Death Star and, and so yeah, far, you know, it's just violence. Well, violence. it's just and it's justifying violence that even the so-called good guys mm -hmm. have to use violence in order to achieve their goal of what ultimate peace. There isn't any. It just keeps no. going on and on and on. Right, right. Okay, it's like fighting fire with fire. All you're going to get is more fire. It's like, that's, this is why I was saying before about the antidote for the archons is, is like you put water or sand on fire in order to put it out. You don't pour gasoline on there, right? Right. right. So this is, what, this is what the antidote looks like, okay? This is what water on the fire looks like is what I said before, being calm, kind, creative. Connecting to the cosmos, those are those things really are the complete opposite of what they're doing to us. 
Right, right, exactly, exactly. Well, Robert, this was a, a really, uh, really fascinating uh, uh, exchange and experience here. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Uh, this interview that lasted a bit longer than, than usual, and and because we you have so much to tell us, and uh, and, uh, and and this this was a uh, um, uh, really uh, 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 really intense, and and keep up the battle for our souls and our sovereignty and and our free will, and I will on my end as well. And Very good. Uh, we'll, we'll wish you uh, good luck in Hong Kong and, and continuing you. your your uh, your uh, research and uh, and also uh, connecting to other other people that, uh, you know, um, open up their minds actually to, to what reality, accurate reality is about. And uh, and uh, we thank you so much and uh, we'll see you see you maybe in the near future. <laughs> Very good, Mark. Thank you. Thank see, you. See you guys next month on, on the Project Camelot TV. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.